keeps going and uh, moving forward, uh, candlestick after candlestick. Okay, so that's that's my definition of what a good trade is. Okay, again, uh, two I mentioned before about actionable. You want actionable trade opportunities from horizontal support and resistance. You don't want to have a, a particular signal because, as you can probably guess, uh, this uh, webinar is basically about momentum trading. You want something that's going to give you uh, action or a movement instantly. So you want to have volatility. In this case, volatility is your friend. You want to see markets like we're going through right now in the Forex and the, and the uh, equity markets where the VIX indicators and, and all the volatility indicators are high because you get extraordinary moves when you have high volatility. It's very difficult to trade breakout method, methods and strategies when you have low volatility. So by having an actionable signal, all you have to do is wait for the volatility to kick in to get things moving. Also now, uh, remember that you want to use as many tools as you can. Now you don't want to, when you're looking at technical indicators as helpers with an auto TARDIS pattern, that you don't want to have too many things that are, are the same. Uh, same indicator. For example, if you're a trader who likes to use RSI, Relative Strength Index, or Stochastic together, you're basically doubling up on the same type of oscillator or indicator. You're showing overbought, oversold, two different ways. But one, but two of them doing the same thing doesn't mean that it's uh, one stronger than the other or the combination of the two are stronger than the other. What you need to look at our patterns and what I call patterns prices in time. So patterns are going to be your candlestick patterns, your dojis, your hanging men, you know, your different patterns, uh, your hammers. Your prices are going to be areas like auto charges horizontal lines or the key levels. And your patterns are also going to be triangles and wedges. And a price, again, will be Fibonacci patterns. They can also be patterns as well as retracement prices. And you can also get time out of Fibonacci patterns. But you can see that you're hearing this constant theme of pattern, price, and time. Some may even use moving averages for price. So when you're working with key levels, which are primarily a price indicator, you want to make sure that you uh, have another, if you're going to use another price indicator, Make sure it's something like Fibonacci prices or price levels that use mathematical equations to come up with prices. So you have one, the horizontal key levels that are coming up with their levels based on how many uh, times in the past areas have been retraced or touched. And then you have the Fibonacci retracement with this mathematical relationship between a high and a low. So you have two different ways to come up with the same area. And that produces like a confluence or a price cluster in the marketplace. And it gives it added uh, weight. Uh, so that's why it's important. Also, remember that the auto chart is uh, chart patterns. If you've come to my webinars in the past, you know I get pretty excited about trading triangles. Uh, because I, I just like the triangle pattern. I like the fact that you start wide and you compress and you compress till you come to a point where the market has to break out, and then how it, it basically pinpoints or telegraphs a time and a price area where there's going to be some movement. So I like that pattern. Now combining that with the horizontals, you have this diagonal pattern and a triangle formation, and now you have a horizontal key level, so you have two different ways to come up with an area. If you can get overlap at a particular price, it's going to give you a a very strong signal because it's going to identify an area where you have two dot types of traders. You're going to have those that are trading support and resistance, and you're going to have those that are trading the pattern. So it's a very exciting um, when you combine these two and get these confluences and get these clusters. So that's why I suggest, and we move forward into some uh, webinars in, uh, next week and the week after, where we go into great detail on how to combine these patterns. So today we're just talking and throwing the idea out there. But remember that uh, using the same principles as highly effective chart and Fibonacci patterns, 
Key levels can easily be combined with other types of analysis to provide powerful confirmation tools. Okay, that statement stands alone, but remember that all the indicators and things that you use uh, have to agree on a particular point, but they should be uh, using different ways to uh, find those areas so you don't get uh, too much um, of the same type of analysis. So make sure when you're looking at analysis tools that you have some kind of uh, weighting between pattern price and time and not just all price or not just all pattern. Okay, that's really key, uh, I believe, to being a successful trader. Okay, here's the second question. And uh, this question is, when multiple chart patterns, Fibonacci patterns and support resistance points occur in very close proximity, the market has formed a and uh, you're supposed to answer either one, a triple crown, two, a bunch bottom, three, a confluence, and four, a divergence. And it looks like we're coming through here with uh, right answer here. The confluence is what we're looking for. And again, it's as I mentioned before, you have a, a bunch of uh, air, uh, prices and patterns coming in, all agreeing that a certain point is very critical. And now the job is simple. All you're doing is reading the momentum in the direction. And that's why I think that in the future when we talk about combining chart patterns and horizontal price levels, we'll talk about this triangle and this horizontal combination. And when you see that take place, then uh, all you have to do is kick back and wait for that big trader to come in or that news to come out that produces the volatility. So it's um, it's very good combination. All right, to answer that question very well, triple crown, of course, has nothing to do with the markets unless you want to name a new signal. Um, I've heard bunch bottom used in Fibonacci, three-way bunch bottoms, things like that. And divergence is something else. Divergence is usually when you have a market going up and an oscillator going down, or vice versa. And you see that a lot when you use price patterns and stochastics. You'll see the stochastic indicator still hooking up when a price maybe takes a stab to the downside. So people do look at uh, divergences. But confluence is what we we're looking for. All right, we'll move on here before we go to some live action. Now, uh, the benefits of this program is that uh, it's easy to use. As I said before, that it's going to appear as a horizontal line on your chart, and what's going to happen is all you're going to have to do then is say, okay, here's here I have this horizontal line. Uh, Autochartist has done the work for me. It's determined its importance uh, based on you know how many times this line's been touched in the past and how the market's reacted at it. So, it's Autochartist has done its part. Now you should come in uh, to a trade or shouldn't even attempt to trade unless you understand the theory of supply of uh, support and resistance. Okay. Now most people it's intuitively understood. As, as this uh, slide says. And that means that if a market goes above this line, simply stated, the market should rally, and if it goes below this line, the market should break. It should be that intuitive. Okay, and so we're also saying it requires no prior knowledge of technical analysis. Looking at supply and, uh, as support and resistance, I would say that that's a true statement, but that's in terms of analysis. When you become a trader, you should have uh, some background on how your indicators and your oscillators work. Also, signals are visually displayed on price graphs, and that's good. So you're not just getting a pile of numbers like some indicators will give you or some software gives you. So then you, you see these numbers, and then you have to visualize in your head what does this look like on a chart. Well, because it's on a chart, it's a lot easier to trade and react to. Because not only do you see the area that's going to break out, but you also see where the market could go. You also see target zones. You also see areas of weakness. Or maybe if uh, the market doesn't do something uh, that it's supposed to do, uh, 
you, you see where your risk uh, uh, potential is, and that's important. Okay, so you don't really need a lot of explanations. You can just look at this chart. You can see that there's a target, there's an exit, and there's a breakout point. So that's what's important. And also you want to know that uh, part of this theory of support and resistance is when a market breaks through resistance, that that old resistance becomes support. And then when a market breaks through a support point, that that old support becomes resistance. We could talk for hours probably on theory of support and resistance. But right now for this purposes, all you need to know is if it breaks out to the upside, it's got a bullish tendency. And if it breaks out to the downside, it's got a bearish tendency. Don't worry about fake outs and things like that. That's Those things happen, but they're not necessarily the, uh, the fault of a support and resistance line. It's basically the fault of a auto uh, of a um, of the volume and also of the uh, supply and demand and the bids and the offers. So just so you know, uh, a lot of times people say, oh, I have bad support, I have bad resistance, but it's not necessarily true. Sometimes it's just a matter of how you read the supply and the volatility and things like that coming into the market. All right, you also get an early warning signal. That's another benefit. With approach signal, traders are given advance warning when price is approaching known key levels. Okay, so what can happen is you can be looking at the auto chart at screen or maybe your other screen, and you'll hear the alert go off, and you'll see that Auto chart has just plotted a chart or a horizontal line where there wasn't one a minute ago. And that's because conditions have changed. So that gives you an early warning that the market has hit a point. It's almost like radar. It hits a point that uh, it's become a blip on the screen. Now you have to watch it. You know, you, you have to decide are you an aggressive trader and you want to buy at that point looking for a move up to a resistance point? Or do you want to say, okay, I know this market's moving up. I'll wait till it gets to the resistance point. So depending on your personal preference and how aggressive you are, you can either treat an approach signal as an immediate entry or as a warning that something's taking place. Okay. Now these alerts have remarkable accuracy and are of great value to traders, and it gives, uh, giving them ample time to set up profitable trades. So as I mentioned, you have the opportunity to say, I have confidence that this is a strong signal that's going to take me close to or maybe all the way up to a resistance point or down to a support point, and you have the opportunity to get in early or you have the opportunity to wait for the market to reach those points and then take action. So again, depending on how uh, you approach the market, it's up to you. Another benefit is performance using the same principles as the highly effective chart in Fibonacci patterns. Key levels can easily be combined with other types of analysis to provide powerful confirmation tools. I mentioned that earlier at length and in the next week when we do breakouts and the week after when we do approaches, we'll go into more details on how to combine these patterns. All right. So again, when you use these combinations, uh, you may be even look at a part of uh, power stats that AutoChartist has in the uh, chart pattern section of the program that you may want to use the power stats in combination with confirmation signals. You may want to take a chart pattern trade and use a horizontal level in uh, to create a confluence with some of the target zones that AutoChartist has. Kind of give you a extra sense of security that maybe a particular market is um, um, rallying into a zone and you want to see you know somewhere inside that target maybe it's a little wide and you throw in a resistance line that falls maybe in the middle of that target zone and it gives you a little bit of uh, confidence that hey this market's uh, this market could go up there and this is where it could go to so there's just different ways you can also use combinations of course to enter the market so here's what the chart looks like and this is a breakout Breakout is when a key level is breached. So the key level is this blue line that comes in here, and it's created by the AutoChartist program that the algorithm that looks at the number of touches, successful touches of this line to determine that it is a support line. Okay, so you're going to get this right around this point 
uh, that it's a support line. And you're going to see that this is a symbol here, the UK 100, which is basically like a FTSE contract, CFD contract. You're going to see uh, the type, it's support, and also the time frame, as well as the breakout time and the length. Now, if you've uh, listened to me and other webinars in the past, you know that the longer these time periods, or the longer the length of these patterns, that the greater respect I have for the move. It's because you've given this period, uh, this market a long time for a lot of eyes to watch. So when these moves are made, you tend to have uh, bigger moves. Also, traders don't like to trade in the same area for a long period of time. They get nervous. They want to move things around. So anytime somebody can break out to take something to another level, they'll do it. So that's part of the reason why uh, people like to trade breakouts. So you can also see that we have a support level identified, and that's, the, that's actually where the line is or where this market can break out. Okay, you can look back in the past and see how the market has behaved before. You can look at where these swing bottoms are. And you may also want to throw in prices like uh, retracement of maybe this low to this high. You want to kind of get an idea of where, uh, what's going on in this center here. And then once the market breaks out, it becomes a pure momentum read. You want to make sure that it's clean, like in this case, it's clean breakout through. All right, clean means that the first bar, the second bar, all close under the support point. All right, and you get you can see based on these candlesticks that there's these quick drives, and that means there's momentum behind it. Of course, you could put up a momentum indicator on another chart, or you can look at volatility or average true range, anything that shows movement. The other thing is you want to know characteristics of these types of patterns as you get these breaks, and then you get these retracements or these tests, and that's important uh, to note also. And then finally, you have this target zone. And this arrow comes in and it gives you an area of what the upper level of this target zone is. And then the gray box shows you the size of the entire target. Okay, it's, it's simply, uh, that's how it's, uh, it looks at like on your charts or on your screen. Now, true or false, breakout signals indicate that some key support or resistance levels have been breached. And uh, we're going to look at this. Um, and it's a poll question there. And it looks like uh, we have almost unanimous here. So it's good. Uh, everybody gets the concept of a breakout. The key area has been broken and that the market is uh, making its next move to the next level. All right. Now, next week, we're going to cover breakouts in more detail. So uh, I want you to attend that so uh, we can cover it and uh, get more specific on, on what markets do and when markets uh, trade through breakouts and how it happens and things like that. Now, an approach is when a price is moving towards a known key level. So as we approach this line, auto charters will identify where this key support area is, and it's going to place this blue line on your chart. So you'll have plenty of time where this dark candlestick is. That's how early you get the warning. So as the market's beginning to approach, you start to pay attention to what's going on. You know, again, you can look at it as this part of a retracement of this particular range. Uh, you want to look for things like that. Then you want to start looking at your momentum indicators. You also want to look at the time of day. They said before that if you're going to have a report coming out or you're going to have a, if you're on the opening of one market or on the close of another market, that there's certain activity that takes place. Sometimes you have what we call in the States are mush time, where uh, Europe is closing and uh, the U.S. is a, a stock market's about two hours uh, old and, and a lot of the orders are already uh, executed. So you get this period of time 
where there's just uh, no matter what you do, whether you're buying supplies,